Today, I think we'll talk a little bit about intentional living. It's been a little while since we've talked about it, and I think I'm just going to do a little refresher today. What do you think? If this interests you, stick around and let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Veronica, and welcome back to The Wholeness Shift. If you're new here, welcome. I teach people about easy, practical spirituality and intentional living and the law of attraction and all of the little things that you can do in your everyday life to create the life of your dreams. So if this interests you, why don't you hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss out on anything good. So what is intentional living? If you had seen my earlier videos, it's one of the very first ones I ever made. Probably the second video, maybe third. Anyways, early videos that I made. And back when, I mean, I still don't exactly know what I'm doing on here. <laughs> but I really didn't then. I was just figuring it out. I was just like, okay, well, I guess I'll hit the button that says record and go from there. I was just getting the information out. And that's still kind of what I'm doing, but maybe I've gotten just a little better at it. <laughs> Okay, so if you've seen that earlier video, then you probably have some idea of what I'm gonna talk about. And this is going to be a lot of the same information, but that was a few years ago. So I wanted to get a fresh video out here with some fresh perspective, a breath of fresh air. So what exactly is intentional living? I talk about it all the time, but what is it if you don't know? Intentional living is really defined as just making a conscious attempt to live life according to your values and beliefs. It's determining what's important to you and what exactly do you want your life to look like and then living in a space of integrity regarding those things. For example, if I wanted to be a person who does triathlons, I probably wouldn't be best served by just going to enroll in some art classes. I mean, I think art benefits everybody, but you get my point, right? Or if I wanted to be really good at managing my money and growing my wealth and investing, I probably wouldn't spend a lot of time shopping online and blowing my money. I always describe it as figuring out what you want to come out of the oven and then putting the ingredients in to get that thing. Because you're not gonna get chocolate cupcakes out if you put in salmon and vegetables, <laughs> right? First, you have to figure out your why. Why are you doing what you're doing and what is it that you want and why? And then you have to build your daily life around that thing and make the little tiny efforts that over time are going to compound and give you this compound effect, like compound interest in the bank account. Always remember this equation. Action times a period of time equal results. Whether positive or negative, you get to decide. If you're going to have an after dinner snack that's full of carbs every single day, because that's just your habit, like it's dessert time, I need a snack. Over time, you're gonna gain weight. Whereas if you start doing sit-ups every single day, you might only be able to do 10 of them. But over time, if you start doing that every single day, you're going to start feeling stronger, you're gonna start getting some results. All of these little decisions and these little choices on a daily basis that seem insignificant in the moment, they set the trajectory for your life. They determine the direction you're going. That's where you're pointing the arrow. And over time as they compound, that's what creates the life of your dreams. You don't just wake up one morning and have the life of your dreams or the perfect house or all the decor or, you know, people walk into your house and go, oh my God, I love it here. Where can I buy this stuff? There might be some stuff that you can buy here and there currently, but usually it's little pieces accumulated over a lifetime that now all combine to make a picture 
of who you are. It's a representation of you and it's things that have been collected and amassed over time, right? Intentional living is about doing the benign, seemingly insignificant things every single day that lead to the life of your dreams because you put in the right ingredients, you get the right thing out of the oven. Are you wanting some real life examples? Um, let's use me as an example. And I don't have a script here. I'm just kind of going off the cuff. So bear with me. We'll figure it out. <laughs> um, and I think I used a couple of these examples in my first video, but they still apply. So for example, I'm someone who, as a highly sensitive person, as an empath, and other things. If my space is cluttered, I'm energetically a mess. As above, so below. So, which came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know. But, if my space is cluttered, it's because my inside space is cluttered, and vice versa. If something happens, I have a big family get together, something like that, and my space is cluttered, I'm not going to feel energetically okay until it's tidied up. That's important to me. And if I ignore that, I'm going to get further and further into this funky space. So to be proactive with that, if I'm feeling energetically kind of like, ugh, merp, I need to get up and I need to tidy my house. And it's nothing special. We all tidy our houses. But, you know, if I go and I light my incense, light a candle, maybe smudge some Palo Santo around, um, maybe play the crystal singing bowl for a few minutes. I actually just got a new one. You can see it back there on the table. <laughs> I don't have a home for it yet, but it just has the most beautiful sound. And it fills this house with so much beauty. And then if I just take even a few minutes or even an hour and like just clean the house, I feel so much better. So I know to me a priority is every night before bed, I'm going to do a little tidy of my house, take 10 minutes, 15 minutes and just Make sure the clothes are in the hamper. Make sure the towels are hung up. Make sure the house is tidy. That way, when I come down in the morning, I don't walk into that energetic messiness. I want to start my day right. So another example of my life would be my home. Because of everything I just talked about and how important it is to me to be in a calm, peaceful environment, energetically and spiritually because I'm so sensitive I did away with any bright colors anything that's energetically shocking some people are fed by those things some people want to be surrounded by bright beautiful colors and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what feeds your soul do that but for me I needed something just zen and grounding, very grounded, earthy, calm, muted colors. So in my home, you'll typically only see those very, like a lot of wood, a lot of very clean lines, um, muted greens. Like when I first moved in, I painted that. It's a more popular green right now. It's a darker green, almost like a Kelly green or an evergreen. And I lived with it for about a week and every single day, all I could think of, I hate that color that is so bright and offensive to my senses. I couldn't have a minute's peace with it. And after about a week, I replaced it with this olive green and <sighs> I just feel so much more peaceful with that more muted, earthy, grounded color. And so for me, that's what resonates like right now lately since Christmas this is just another example I had put that new table runner on my table and I don't know if you could see it you see it it's like a black and white buffalo check I love it it's so cute 
I bought myself one and I bought my sister-in-law one for Christmas and I love it. But it's almost too shocking for me. I'm telling you now that's not going to last very long. I'm trying to like it because I do like it. But it's almost offensive to my system. It's just too bold, too much. And so I will probably end up replacing it with something more earth toned or calming. I usually have like this cream colored macrame crocheted one on there that's super cute. Um, but I'm trying to do something new. It's just not working. So for me, in order to create the space that I'm comfortable in, I had to do my home in, and I'm sure you've seen my house, but let me see if I can just turn this. See how everything's just muted, earth tones. The next example I can think of off the top of my head is this channel. This was birthed out of just a desire to help people. Originally, I know I think I've shared this with you guys before, but originally I had worked in a very large place. I worked at the main campus of the Cleveland Clinic. And so if you've ever been there, it's massive. And the word started spreading amongst my coworkers and then even further to people I don't know, because I mean, there are thousands and thousands of people that work there. And every single day I would either get a page or somebody would wander up to my desk and say something like, hey, so-and-so said that you could help me learn to meditate can you teach me or can we talk about this? Can we go to lunch? Or, hey, I saw your blog and I printed it out and I've made all these notes. Can we go talk about this? And that was awesome. People were learning and people were waking up and it was just from me going to work and sitting at my desk and having a few conversations with people. But what was happening is that I was having to repeat the same information over and over and over and over. So originally I had just made an email, I typed it all out in an email, how to meditate, these are links to my favorite videos, etc. And then they would usually come back with questions and stuff. And so then I was thinking, you know what, maybe I should just like make a video of me explaining it and then I could just send them the link or something. And so that was my initial thought with this. And then, sorry, something's like, um, and then I started thinking, you know, I have so much else I could teach people. You know what? I think I'm going to start a channel. Am I crazy? Would people even watch it? You know what? Let's give it a shot. So I... Hello, helicopter. Do you guys hear that? Nothing flies that low unless it's life flight. And it is. And that hurts my heart. I've worked in the hospital too long to not be affected by a life flight. I mean, it's you're not affected at all because it's second, it's everyday thing to you. But at the same time, it always tugs at my heart because I know that that's trauma. And so whenever I see a life flight, all I can do is just stop and pray. And I just send love and light to the person in there and to keep everyone safe because somebody's hurting right now. Sorry. I didn't mean for this to get interrupted by life flight. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so I started um, planning for this video and then to get the word out to people, you have to have this thing grow and be successful or no one's ever going to see it. It's never going to be recommended. No one's ever going to hear about it. So because what I wanted was to get this message out there to the people, to help humanity, to help people grow, to help people know that they're not alone, to help people know that what they're experiencing is normal and they don't have to be afraid and that it's okay just surrender and let go and I'm here as a resource if you need help I had to act in a very intentional manner on a daily basis and I still do in order to create the vision of what I want and what I mean by that is every single day I'm in the comments 
I'm answering comments, I'm responding to comments, I'm answering emails, I'm doing coaching, I'm whatever, you know, all those things. And what shocks me is that you guys are usually shocked because you're like, I can't believe that you actually respond to me. Thank you so much. That makes me feel so good and I appreciate that. And what I'm thinking is, are other people not responding? Because I can't imagine not responding if someone's asking me for help. But that's just who I am. Like I'm, I don't want to call you guys customers. You're not customers. You're people. You're my friends. Um, I'm people obsessed. I'm humanity obsessed. I want us all to grow and learn and whatnot. So yes, I'm going to respond. I'm in it with you. We are in these trenches. We are a community and we have each other's backs. I see you guys responding to each other in the comments and encouraging other and ugh, that fills my heart. But it's because every single day I planned a video, I scripted a video, I filmed a video, I edited a video, I answered the calls, I answered the comments, I answered the emails, all of those things. And I meditated every day. I kept my vibes up. I communicate still with spirit. I didn't give up. That too. Everything I do on a daily basis feeds into this vision that I've want, I'm needing and wanting to create because that's been my purpose and my mission. Step two is going to be to shift your perspective and make sure you're going about this with the right mindset. You are the one consciously creating your reality. You are not a victim in any area of your life. This is your life, your reality, you're creating it. So shift that perspective and realize that you're actually the one in the driver's seat. And not only do you have to create the life that you want to live, you don't have a choice, but you get to create the life you want to live. You aren't stuck with anything. If you wanted to give it all up today and go to medical school, you can do that. I remember when I was in nursing school, I was young, my 20s, late 20s. And if they're not old. I know that now. <laughs> they're probably my age now. But I remember at the time, there were women in there and men who were working on their second career because they decided they didn't want to do what they were doing before and they were consciously making the decision to do something else. They were recreating their lives and that was so cool and I had so much respect for them. So it's never too late. I mean, Julia Child was in her 50s when she started, right? And didn't I read that Morgan Freeman was at least that old or older when he got his first movie? I haven't done the research on that, but look it up. I think I'm right. So step three is going to be after you've identified your why and your what, like what is it that you want? How do you want your life to look and why? Then you need to sit down and list out some behaviors and habits that will either contribute to that or contaminate that and then act accordingly. For example, I'm naturally a night owl. I worked night shift as a nurse for at least a decade. If left to my own devices, I will always be up until at least one in the morning. I consider one in the morning like early to bed. I would normally be up to like three or four. But I know that it's in my best interest to get at least eight hours of sleep. I also know that my guide likes to wake me up by 8 a.m. <laughs> they, they know more than you do, right, about you, and they know energetically I function best when I don't sleep late. I will get the best results out of the day. I will feel best energetically if I'm up. So right now, if I have a specific talk with them at bedtime and say, I want to sleep until at least 9 in the morning, okay, please and thank you. And then they'll usually let me sleep until 9 a.m. 9 a.m., I'm up. So since I know that I'm not going to get to sleep later than 8 o'clock or so, 
maybe nine if I'm pushing it sometimes. I need to reverse engineer that and I need to go to bed and at a time that I can get at least eight hours of sleep. Lately I've been cheating and I've been staying up even when they're trying to put me to sleep. Like I'll just feel sleep coming on. I'm like, I don't want to go to sleep yet. And it's not like my body's tired. It's more of an energetic sleep. Have any of you guys ever had that? It's almost like a deep meditation wants to come on me. Energetically, they are pushing me like, close your eyes. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> so anyways, I push through it because I'm like, I don't want to go to bed. I'm like a kid. And so I've been staying up until I will only get like six or seven hours of sleep. And so they've been kind of letting me get away with it for a little while because I do have that free will. But I can just feel them looking at me like, uh, I'd love to see how she thinks this is going to turn out. Okay, girl, do you, boo. We're just going to sit here and watch. <laughs> They're there with their popcorn like, um, so I know that's not going to sustain because they're right. I do function best when I get at least eight hours of sleep is what it is. So in order to feel my best, I have to go to bed on a work day by 11 and on the weekend by midnight. Boring. Merp. Another thing that's important to me is paying down my debt I don't have a lot of debt, but there are a couple bills that I just want paid off and out of here. It would just make my life so much easier. Um, and so I also know that I have a problem with shopping online. I own it. Is there a Shoppers Anonymous? I'm sure there is. I should be in it. I don't. The thing is that I don't spend a lot of big money. I spend a lot of little money that nickels and dimes me to death. It's so easy to do, like on Amazon or something, and you're like, well, that thing's only five bucks, or that thing's only 15 bucks. And then you order that, and then you order another one, and then you order another one. So a couple of things that I've started doing. First of all, if you haven't seen my money reset video from a few years ago, it's very good advice, very good information. I will link to that for you. And I still follow those spending freezes I'm in one right now all of January was a spending freeze I haven't done great but I've done okay it's my story and I'm sticking to it but I've also done things like I'm not allowed to click buy now on Amazon you know the buy now button not allowed to I have to add to cart and then I have to let it sit there so if I just choose a day of the week where I'm allowed to purchase. Let's say, for example, on Saturdays. On Saturday, I get up and I'm allowed to purchase what's in my cart. It's been sitting there all week accumulating. What ends up happening is I go in there and look at the cart and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, that's a lot of money. I don't want to spend that much money. And I end up deleting half the stuff out of that cart because I'm like, I don't really need that. And I don't really need that. Whereas if I would have bought them individually, I would have just bought them individually. And I would have spent that much money anyways. But when I see it all together in my face and I'm like, I don't need those things that bad that I'm going to spend that much money. Mm -mm. So that helps. But I have to be intentional about that and not just click buy. I used this quote in my first video and I still love it. So I'm going to say it again. It's by the author Annie Dillard. And she said, how we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. So choose wisely, you guys. Be intentional about every little thing. Know that there's no wasted effort. There's no wasted moment. These are the moments that make up your life. So what do you want your life to look like? Figure that out and then go create the life of your dreams because you can have anything you want. You can make it look and feel however you want it may take some hard decisions in the meantime it may mean ending some relationships or starting some new relationships taking a chance on love again or getting rid of the toxic love that's been weighing you down it may mean changing jobs it may mean a lot of things or it may just take little tiny tweaks every day 
The thing is that you are the captain of the ship. There's no one driving but you. So go create the life of your dreams. Enjoy your day. I'll talk to you soon.